John Godwin, welcome to the Chad Sylvia Show. Well, thank you. I appreciate you having me. Well, I tell you that without a doubt, Duck Dynasty is my favorite television show. <laughs> Man, we're still trying to figure out what happened. <laughs> well, I hope, I hope to find out more about your insights on what happened, but I'm a tough cookie to, to like new TV shows. I honestly, I can't think of one newer TV show or new TV show, I should say, that I've liked in the past 25 years besides Duck Dynasty. Man, that's crazy. It's, it's crazy how it all happened. Well, how did it all happen? How did, how did, how did, from your perspective where you're at, because obviously you were an employee of Duck Commander. Right. Um, I assume most people have heard the show and know the story about Duck Commander and the Duck Dynasty, how it all fits together. But why don't you explain how it started um, with you? Well, it, uh, I, I've been working with Phil. I've been down there, I think, about 20, 20, this is my 20th year working full time with Duck Commander. I worked at a paper mill for 21 years and uh, started going to church with them guys and got to be good friends with them and actually got to be best friends with Alan, Phil's oldest son, and he invited me to come hunt and I'd go down there on my days off and I figured out pretty quick if he showed up around 12 o'clock, Miss K was cooking. So, <laughs> so I figured out when to show up down there pretty quick. But got to go hunting and uh, hunting with him and finally ended up, he told me I, he might as well hire me since I'm down there all the time. I'd go down there on my days off. And so that's how I ended up working for him, and, uh, which is pretty cool. It was quite the decision because, you know, Riverwood was my bread and butter. I was, you know, that was, that was our security, good benefits, good pay, great pay, and you know, working all the time inside out of the rain and boy, going to Duck Commander would be, you know, a little cut and pay, but I'd be home every day. I worked shift work, so I'd work. Me and my wife had one weekend off a month together the way it was going. So that was kind of a, that was kind of a good deal of it. But still, you know, taking a cut and pay, that was, that was quite an end. And of course, you know, I wanted to work for Duck Commander and get to duck hunt every day. Who wouldn't? So, <laughs> <laughs> well, how long? How long before? How long when, after you started working there did the show start? Oh, it was probably well. It started in 2011. You know, we we've been doing these uh, hunting DVDs for you know Phil has for 30 years. So he'd do a, a DVD every year, and we'd get sponsors. You know, shotgun sponsors and clothing sponsors, camo clothing. And uh, different things like that you use for hunting, and so we uh, we were shooting Benelli shotguns, and we done a show on the Outdoor Channel for three years called Benelli Presents Duck Commander, and a producer seen that, and uh, a guy from Louisiana actually, and he got in touch with the company, and I think he got through email. Didn't nobody believe what was he was asking? He. He said he'd seen the show on the Outdoor Channel. He thinks he could bring it to a bigger network, which we were fired up about it because we thought we were going to get hunting on a main channel, you know, on TV, be the first, you know, to do that. So we were pretty excited about it. And they came down. So yeah, you thought it was going to be something totally different than it ended up being then. Oh, it was. It was. They, they came down and talked to us, you know. And it was in the spring of the year, and they, Phil said, well, we decided we're going to do it. We're going to do the show, and because uh, we got together and talked about it. And he asked him, he said, when do y'all want to start filming this stuff? They said, well, we're ready to go right now. And Phil said, well, <laughs> duck season don't start till November. They said, no, we're not going to film y'all duck hunting. And Phil looked at everybody. He said, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> he said, don't worry about this. This is going to be one and done. And man, 131 episodes and five years later, what a deal. Well, I, I, I can't believe that the magic that took place with that show. I, I Seriously, like I... My family and I, it's our favorite show still. And I know that you guys are not making new episodes now, but, you know, we have, uh, you know, access digitally 
It's on, uh, it's on different, you know, cable and satellite channels. And we watch it every time we get a chance. It doesn't get old. And I can't say that about too many shows. Like, it does not get old. I mean, you guys, the cast of characters together is not only hilarious, but it's just fascinating. Like, I don't think you could have, I don't think somebody could have put this together, you guys together, if they tried. It was just fate. <laughs> I don't know. It surely was a blessing. I mean, that's a, we act like that all the time, so it was fairly easy to do it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere, everywhere no, I, I go, people ask me, and they say, is Cy really that crazy? I say, he's worse <laughs> than that. You ought to see him in real life. <laughs> is is Cy any less um, Cy-ish since the show went off there? He's still the no, same. No, he's the same. He's, there ain't a malicious bone in his body. He loves everybody. He likes to make everybody laugh. And I tell you, you think as many years as we hung around together, you've heard every story he's ever told. But that ain't true. He, he's got them in reserve. Uh, you know, I, I could picture that. It's funny, like, being a fan of a reality show, you feel like you get to know the people on the show even though you don't know them. Um, and it's like, I don't know you personally. This is the first time we've talked personally. I don't know Cy or any of the guys, but we get the sense as, as viewers that we know you. And, uh, and and today I'd like to talk about some things maybe to get you know you a little bit better than what some of the side of you that maybe the show didn't show. But I do have... One question right off the bat that I have to get to. I got to get to this question because, like I told you, Duck Dynasty is my favorite television show, and um, I've seen every episode, and it, every episode is hilarious. Every episode is entertaining. But my all-time favorite moment in Duck Dynasty, my all-time favorite, it makes me laugh even when I think about it. Will involves you, and I have to ask you about this episode. This this part of the episode. My all-time favorite moment in in Duck Dynasty, the whole series, is the episode with you when you eat the old pickles. Now look, no way. <laughs> when you can stuff, are you familiar with canning? You know, people can and they use the mason jars. And when you open it after you've canned it and you put it in the cabinet and it sit there a while, and and you open it up and you listen for the pop. If that lid okay. pops, that means it's fresh. <laughs> that lid popped when I opened it. But I got a disclaimer. Don't believe okay, it. Don't believe it. <laughs> oh, I believe it. If you know any of our listeners who out there have not seen this episode, go find it. I don't know what the name of the episode is, but basically, you know, give you a synopsis, but like, you know, you had found um, some canned pickles that was it like what did you find a bluff what is it called what happened there's some sort of weather variation well, it, that causes yeah, the water to we rise get, we get a backwater in the spring like you know flooding and the backwater and it'd been in another blind and they just kind of got in the water and floated but i mean they wasn't but a year old <laughs> well i mean you know if it's canned properly it should it work right but when but i it, opened it it popped I'm telling you, it popped. I'd have never eat them. But I guess out in the sun, out in the, I don't know, bad call. <laughs> well, for the people who haven't seen the episode, it didn't work out like it was supposed to. And you end up getting very sick. But the other part of the episode that, like, really was, like, to me, like, still, I don't know. I, I feel bad because I'm talking to you now. But it, like, puts a smile on my face. It's like, it's not just like, you know, obviously it, it didn't work out. They weren't fresh like you thought they were but the fact is is that the when you were getting sick it just seemed like everybody kind of was looking around like it's business as usual like nothing that out of the order was happening and you were puking your guts out i you have to see the episode I don't know. you got you got to have thick skin around that bunch it's like you know who's a man you get your finger cut off okay put it back on put it in a bag whatever but we're gonna get through doing what we're doing <laughs> you know, every man for a be a man. Get up and get, get keep going. Put some dirt on it. Now, I, I would also, I don't, I want to talk to you more about than just what you put in your mouth. But another uh, episode that I really love is the sausage episode, and I have very specific questions about that and about your views on it. Because in this episode, you guys had, I believe, caught or, or killed a rattlesnake and, and you took it in to make sausage in some sort of rodent creature. What are they called? I forget. A nature rat. Okay. 
and you took them in and you guys made sausage out of them and and i assume I, you guys ate them later on it showed part of that i believe yeah. didn't you on the on yeah. the show well people eat them rattlesnakes well, all the time and i guess you cook it and you get you know the heat that kills all the poison the venom whatever i don't know that's the only thing i was worried about it's the venom part but, um so what was the taste like well it kind of you know it had all that seasoning in there so it didn't really it didn't really remind me of anything odd. It, it just tasted like it was supposed to. Because you've, cause you've had rattlesnake before, so it just tasted like rattlesnake. Yeah. Okay. Now, what? Now uh, the nature the nature rat, now is nature that rat. a delicate? The nature rat's a little bit. It is down south, down around Highway 10 and, and below that. That's where them real Cajuns are down there. They eat them all the time. Their deal is yep. down down below Highway 10. If you see something, you shoot it. And then the next question is, reckon we can eat that? <laughs> no, so that leads me to my next question. What would you say was the most unusual thing you've eaten then, like compared to like what most people eat on a daily basis? Because obviously rattlesnake and nature rat to a lot of people would be very unusual. Is there something more unusual than that, you think? Oh, uh, no, I mean, we eat crawfish. We, eat, I guess the most, I tried this one time. It was, uh, it was a, well, it was a snail. I eat a snail. I said, no, oh, uh, es- they called it, I want, I'm trying to think of a train, escargo. That's what they call it. There you go, escargo. Well, that was pretty tasty. Well, you like the escargo? It wasn't bad. I was surprised. Okay, I have a question that has nothing to do with food. You know, it's really cool as somebody who's a big fan of yours and your TV show, Duck Dynasty, to be talking to you, but it's, you know, it's cool for me to think about, like, from your vantage point, like, I'm a big fan of your show. Now, what you being, you know, somebody who is a star on a television show, what shows tv shows do you like what tv shows are you fan of what tv shows am i a fan of i'm kind of i watched the big bang theory now and then now that's different ain't it okay and uh well watched the uh, enemy within i kind of like these uh spy crime deals kind of something like that of course i watched the avengers that's the motion pictures though and uh of course, I watched the game, uh, Game of Thrones. I'm watching that right now. So, you know, that's a big one right now. I've never seen it. I've uh, people post about it on Facebook, and I'm like lost. I have like no clue what they're talking yeah, about. Yeah, but but if somebody mentions Duck Dynasty, I'm I'm all on it. Now, here's the thing: your show, Duck Dynasty, to me is it kind of like it helps. It's like a barometer when I uh, when I meet people. Because, like, if I talk to somebody and they either have never seen Duck Dynasty or they don't like Duck Dynasty, that tells me a lot about them. I use it as a gauge. I've told that to my wife. I'm like, if somebody doesn't like Duck Dynasty, I don't know if I can, like, you know, I'm going to end up getting along with them. Just because it's so hard not to like the show. (laughs) It is. Like, I'm telling you, like, 25 years of television, and, and there's not one show until Duck Dynasty that came on that I'm like, you know what? I like this show. I mean, because I like things like, you know, I watch old shows like The Brady Bunch. I like old sitcoms. Yeah, I, I like, watch that. Um, I watch that. You can see, you just can't help but love The Brady yeah. Bunch. Andy and, Griffin. And Remember Andy Griffin? Yeah. You whistling that tune I all the time? Watching, I was just watching Andy <laughs> Griffith right before... <laughs> I was just watching Andy Griffith right before I did the inter- started this interview. Literally, it's on the TV. I went from the, watching that to in the studio to, re- to do an interview with wow. him. So anyway, I think it goes along with the classics, you know. It's an instant classic. Wow. And, uh, you know, the thing about it is, is I saw I heard a statistic, and I forget exactly what it was. Maybe you know what it is, but if you don't, that's cool. But I heard a statistic that it was like the most viewed – was it the most watched reality show in television history? Is that That's right? That's what I've heard. They said that we beat out American Idol on the on their finale while it was on. So that was pretty big. No, it's huge. I believe it. I believe it. And if anybody's not seen the show, please see the show. Now, you know, 
speaking of TV shows, and I asked you about your favorite shows, I have a question for you because there's a show that I used to love growing up, and I saw by happenstance that I think you were going to be involved in some sort of festival related to it. Maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe you can Dirt shed more light on it. Maybe you can plug whatever. Yeah, what is it? Yeah, Duke's Hazard. Yeah, That's exactly it's in right. Georgia. So Georgia, it's in. Uh, I forget the town. I'd have to look at my stuff. Yeah, it's just a uh, Duke's a Hazard Fest that's coming up, and uh, we're gonna all be there. Martin's gonna be there, and uh, I don't know. I think Luke's gonna be there. That's gonna be pretty cool. I don't know how I'm gonna act around them people. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be so like all fan dude, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was wondering. Like, you know, I love Duke's Hazard, and and I saw you're going to appear at this Hazard Fest or whatever it's called. So I imagine you're a big yeah, fan. Yeah, we watched that too. Of course, I raced motocross when I was a kid, so I like doing stuff in cars. You know, pretty fast trucks, stuff like that. So that really, you know, me and mom and dad, we'd sit there and watch it when it come on. It was good. Now you're going to be at this festival. What's a good place to go and find more information about things that you're doing and places you're going to be speaking at or appearing? You can go to the Hazard Fest on a Facebook page or go to my Facebook page and I got to add up where you can click on it and, and find out all the information you need. But as far as I need to be putting uh, more of my stuff on there, I speak pretty much every weekend somewhere or going somewhere. I think if you ask me what's the funnest thing that come out of Duck Dynasty, I think it's being able to travel the country and meet all these people. I mean, there's great people all over this country. You just don't see it in the news, but there's there's great people all over this country. Well, yeah, you know, that leads me to another question. You said that, you know, the coolest, basically the coolest things happened to you since Duck Dynasty was to be able to meet people all over the country. But let me ask you this. How has life changed for you, like, good or bad besides that since duck dynasty the show has it done is it what positive things it brought besides that what negative things has it brought you well i don't i don't guess there's any negative things it's uh well i've never i've never lived so fast one day at a time while the show was going on because you never knew when they was going to call you hey we're going to do this this is when we're going to do this come on and do this it's crazy because You'd be at work, and then all of a sudden you'd you'd be gone somewhere, and and somebody'd have you over here, and it, it was pretty crazy doing that. I, it, it was a shock to see how many people that the audience couldn't see that was looking at us while that was all going on. There's fifty people in there, four or five cameras, and you mean all, all the yeah, the producers and all that. It it it, it was a whole city back there. Well, you know, besides that, how do, do people, did people like fans start showing up randomly? Oh, yeah, your guys yeah they work? come to, well, yeah, they, they come to, it's kind of slowed down now, of course, but while it was going on, it'd take us 30 minutes to get in there to go to work. Of course, you know, we didn't mind, but it was kind of, kind of weird, you know, because we're just us. We, we, get, we don't. I don't know. It's just hard to see yourself as people wanting to come meet you. So you had to like sign autographs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was weird and cool at the same time. I mean, who, who don't well, like I think to be fussed over? I guess, but you know, we're just us, like I said. And it's just well, I think that's what the attraction is. I think the attraction, it's partially to your show and to you and all the guys, is that it's just so it's just so real. Like it's just you know, reality TV isn't really all reality, but when it comes to your personalities, like it's like it really seemed like you know what you saw is what you got, or, or what you know whatever. Like it, you guys just seem like genuine, real people and intelligent people and funny people and charming people and interesting people and it just worked together that's like i said at the beginning of the interview that you couldn't have made this happen like it was just you guys together it was just magic that you couldn't force yeah, I, we just it's just hard to see it it's hard to see it i mean that's just what well, feels feel working for him i mean they're just special people um when he, he said you get hungry Go get Miss K, fix you something to eat. He said, you get sleepy, go take you a nap, which Cy really took for granted. 
and uh, <laughs> and he said, "You want to go fishing? Go fishing a little while, you know. Just you know what you got to do. Just get it done. So we'll do that. We'll stop and uh, we'll go uh, fishing sometimes in the mornings and come in about eleven o'clock and we'll just stay till seven, eight o'clock. You know, just doing what we got to do. It's not really, it's not really wow. structured, I guess." That sounds like a great work environment, and you say you're still Fair working work there. there. I'm running the shipping department, and I don't make as many duck calls as I used to. Jay Stone's building the duck calls now, and uh, if he gets in a bind, I'll go in there and help him build some. But I'm running the shipping department. Still take the trash out to the road every Wednesday night. You got No matter who you are, you got to take out the trash. got to make Mama happy. She got on me the other day because she took it out. I just told her she beat me to it. <laughs> You got you to gotta let that happen yeah, once in yeah. a while. Now, I, this is a question I ask a lot of my guests. Uh, I love music. You know, we have a radio station, 20th Century.fm, and I just love music. And so, like, what type of music You're are you into? You're not believe what I'm fixing to tell you. Uh, I have been hit a diehard fan for, since I was about, golly, I don't know, about 16, 17 of Rush. Oh, I believe it. I've had my daughters They're a great fan. band. My kids are a fan of the band I listen to. I mean, them three boys, they can make some racket now. They're great. No, and 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 I know actually the thing about Rush is, my viewpoint on Rush is really simple. Some of the most diverse people I've ever met in my life like Rush. Like from all categories of people you would meet. Love Rush. Man, they can just they can just make some music. And uh, Neil Peart, I mean, he can just, <laughs> he, it's crazy. It's crazy. And that drummer. But they're a great band. Now, what other type of bands or what other bands or types of music do you like besides Rush? Anything else? Well, I mean, uh, I listen to a little bit of country, not a whole lot. And uh, just a little bit of gospel music, you know, but that's, that's about it. I don't listen to it no more, just a whole lot. I listen to a lot of a lot of talk radio stuff, NASCAR stuff, and I'm a big fan because I race motocross, of, of uh, supercross and motocross and NASCAR. I got to drive a car at Texas. That was pretty. I went 10 laps, and the guy was sitting beside me. He said, you going to go fast? I said, well, I don't know. I ain't. I ain't never experienced that kind of speed before, but it was the smoothest ride I have ever been in. It was the only time I could tell I was really going fast is when I got close to the fence. They said I was doing 150, so I don't know if that's how fast I was doing wow. or not, but I was going fast, and it, they got it where it misses when you get going real fast, and it won't let you go no faster, and I stayed on that rev limiter pretty much the whole time <laughs> but it was i could have went faster now but i can see that uh you got 40 cars in there we now that's a different that's a different story but you out there by yourself it's, it's pretty neat so then you're a sports fan yep i, I like to well like, i watch a little bit of college football but but not really particular because when I was young, you know, I was doing that motocross racing and that's pretty much what I've done. So not too much. Uh, I watch football every once in a while. I watch baseball a little bit, but not just a diehard fan on, on that. Now, another question back to the show. What of all the people that you, you know, are friends with and work with on Duck Dynasty, who would you say that you're closest to? You mentioned that you were really good friends with Alan, which I didn't know that, which is the oldest son of right. Phil and Kay. Besides Alan, who who? Because you seem like Martin, and you seem close on the show, but yeah, I don't know if that's Martin's how it was. Pretty or... close, and uh, me and Jace is pretty close. Uh, Willie, he's he's gone all the time, <laughs> but he's, he's they're doing him and Corey's got a lot of things going, you know, with that uh, one now that. Um, them kids and stuff like that and traveling over to Africa and all that, doing that stuff with them. So they're in and out all the time, but we're all pretty close. We see less now of each other than we used to. I mean, Miss Kay, when we working down there at Fields on the river at his house, 
I mean, that's that's what it was. We she'd cook dinner, and it's you come in and eat. You stop working. I'd be out there helping the UPS guy, FedEx guy load trucks, and she'd be on that intercom. Don't let this dinner get cold. I said, I'm trying to load these trucks. She'd say, bring them in there with you. So I'd say, you guys hungry? Come on. And uh, that's just the way they are, you know. Well, it sounds like, you know, you guys have an amazing, you know, thing going on in every area, not just the TV show, but in your real life, personal lives, in your work environment. And, you know, I'm so impressed with so many people that are involved with the show from our aspect of being able to see it on TV. And I, the importance of family is just, it just really touches me because, you know, the two most important things in my life are God and right. my family. And just to see to see people on TV reflecting that as well, it's just such an attraction. Yeah, I know. I think we take it for granted because, you know, I, I didn't become a Christian until I was, you know, I've been a Christian for since 96. And uh, that's when I met Phil and him, and he shared the gospel with me and told me what Jesus done for me. I'd never heard that story before. I just thought you had to act like this, act like this. I didn't know how much God loved you what he's done for us you know and, yes uh man just just since all that's happened and uh living like that i just you just forget how you used to be you know how the world is mostly and it's just i guess it's protected a little bit i guess i don't know but we, we. Well, there, there's a story that i heard and Maybe you know more about it. That was Is this true or not? Maybe this is not accurate, so I'm going to ask you. I heard that there was an issue on the show where, I don't know if it was the, the network at the time or the producers, whoever it was, was did not want you to say Jesus' name when you prayed. Well, is they that just true? cut it out one time when we done it. I mean, the first time we we done the dinner scene is um, we just – started you know phil said a prayer for a week because that's just what we do <laughs> and, they, and they said oh you ain't got to right. do that and we're like well we, we always do that <laughs> i mean it's just what we do they said oh okay well they rolled the cameras on it and uh, we figured they'd never show that you know and uh when they when they showed it they took in jesus name out of the prayer at the end and then Phil got a little bit upset about it and said something to him about it. and They put it back in, but uh, it wasn't as big a deal as I've heard it was had turned out to be. But uh, it got back in there, so we win. That's great. And I'm just, you know, it's such a great show. Families can watch it. And speaking of which, you said you're married. I have Do you have one any daughter. Uh, she's been, uh, she's been out of college. We used to make a joke. She's been out of college two years now, and uh, we say she's off the payroll, but that's not really true. Well, you, you told you told you told me that uh, you said you. I, I guess I didn't did know you have kids because you said your kids like the yeah, same my band daughter, as you. Yeah, Rush, right? She's twenty six. She'll be twenty seven October. Yep, oh she's, wow! She's adopted. Wow. And my wife couldn't have children. Neither one of us. We got. We had a good, we know it's family it all pretty, the same. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. Well, God is good. God is good. I have a daughter as well. I've got a son, but I actually, you're going to be part of a new segment, if you don't mind, on my show. I've never done okay. this before. And it's something I want to continue to do with all my guests. But God, when you are the first for this to happen with you. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to do a new segment with my daughter. She's uh, nine years old. Excuse me. She's eight years old. Almost nine. Almost nine. She's eight years old. And her name is Violet, and she is going to ask you a question. And the segment's called "One Question with Violet." I'm Are you yeah. good with that? Yeah, okay. don't ask let me, let no me step out of the questions. studio. <laughs> <laughs> you know, math is not her favorite subject, so I don't think that'll be a problem. Let me step out of the studio and get her. Okay. I'll be right back in just one moment. All right, here's one question with my sweet, beautiful eight-year-old daughter, Violet. Violet, ask your question Question to Godwin. What is it like shooting ducks? Oh, let me tell you. When you're out there and you see them and you call them with the duck call that you've made and they talk back to you, it, it makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. It's so awesome. 
But the best part is when you get them in close enough and you're good enough to hit them and you get to take them home and you take that the breast meat out and you wrap it in bacon and put some cream cheese in there and grill it medium, it is the most excellent meat you'd ever want to eat. <laughs> Vi- Violet, do you have any follow-up questions for that at all? Or, is, are, you, or are you just going to stick with the one question? I think, hey, you know what? Y- you can't see in radio, but, you know, you made her day. She's a big fan of yours oh, as well, thank Godwin. Thank you very much. And, uh, she now go have you a ham sandwich. Do you have anything you want to plug? Is there anything well, else you want to plug before uh, we go? You know, a lot of people ask us what we're doing now. We do. We are putting some content on YouTube. And uh, on the Duck Commander YouTube page, it's called Commander Life. We've, uh, we're have we fishing, and uh, we've started two new brands, Fin Commander and Strut Commander. Strut Commander for the turkey and Fin Commander for fishing. And, uh, of course, there's duck hunting on there, too. So we're putting new content on there. I think it's once a week we, we got new content. So I'm supposed to say like and subscribe. But we, we, we've had yes. some, uh, we've got some turkey calls now. we got some new stuff coming out for this fall in the deer hunting side. And we're making grunt calls that they've been, they've made and used last year and they work. So that's great. And uh, we've teamed with uh, Jeff Smith from Leland Lures Crappie Magnet. And uh, so we got some baits in uh, Walmart, Bass Pro, call your big retailers, you know. And it's doing really well too. Well, I encourage our listeners to, you know, go to your Facebook right. page and uh, check out what you guys are all up to because it seems like you guys are up to a lot of different things. You know, I assume, you know, people going to see Duck Dynasty could do nothing but help you. I know that to me, it's an escape. You know, it's one of those things like, you know, I've got a long day and a hard day. And I, one of the favorite things to do is just watch Duck Dynasty. You guys have brought so much joy. Godwin, you're a lovable guy. I appreciate you so much for coming on the show. And I hope we can do this hey, again sometime in the future. Anytime.